Hey and welcome to another tutorial. Today I will show you how to create this Paramount logo inside Microsoft PowerPoint. So the left one is an image, the right one is the logo created inside PowerPoint. So let's get started. I will start in the blank presentation. I already have the logo in here, but I will select Format Ribbon, Colors and I will select this gray preset because I want this logo to be a little bit faded just so I can see what, what I'm drawing. And I will most likely start with this mountain. For this I will use a custom shape tool, use the freeform shape, so I will select Insert, Shapes, a freeform shape, it's also down here in the line section, so it's a freeform shape. I will start actually somewhere outside of the shape, maybe in here, just so when I later on merge those shapes together, it will be there will be a lot of space around. So I will start by tracing this, maybe at the point here and here and here. I also want one point up here, I want few points here and I will make them around it later on. Now, when you draw those shapes and you just suddenly, you know, accidentally click somewhere you don't want to click, there is a simple trick. You can just uh, press the backspace key on your keyboard and it will remove, you know, previously drawn, you know, points. So you can press the backspace key multiple times if you want to go back to your previous point. So this is an easy trick how to make adjustments if you already have placed like 20 different points, but you see that one of them, when them is wrong, you can press the backspace key and go back in your in time. Okay, so I'll place one final point here and close the shape like this. Then I will open the outline and set the no outline and for the fill I will most likely increase the transparency a little bit just so I can see what's below. Then I will zoom even more. And you can see that seems like that this line is not even right. So I will right click and select edit points and I will move this point more to the right side. Maybe there is a little bit of roundness, maybe just the points were on the wrong spots. And I will basically just set the some handles for some of those points to make those rounded. So this should be rounded for sure. So I'll right click and select smooth point. And this should be a smooth point. So I'll just rotate the handles like this. Anything else is kind of random. You can see that some of those handles are already in the place where they should be. So I'll maybe do it like this. And here is, sorry, I just accidentally move it. I have to right click and select eight points one more time, but. No, you want to prevent moving the uh, points around because usually it's kind of breaks the layout. I, I need one more point here, but it, there is nothing in here, so I can just, just click with my right, uh, control key pressed and I will new add a new point here. As you can see, it kind of screwed the handles for this point, so I have to fix this, but you get the point. I'm pretty happy with the shape, even though it's not very same looking, but you will notice once we move it away from the original logo, you will not see a difference. So I will draw this circle, insert shapes oval, and I will draw it with the shift key being pressed. And of course I need to increase the transparency just a little bit to see what's below so I can position it properly. But it seems like that the shape is about the same size. So I will select the oval and the mountain and select the merge shapes subtract. Now there is a little bit of leftover down here. So I will maybe fix this with another rectangle, which I will also merge shapes subtract from, main, from the main shape. So we have the main shape, which is great. Now we can focus on those lines over the mountains. Now previously I was using a freeform shape tool as well, but I believe that I can also use the curve tool. Now the curve tool is a little bit tricky, so if you select insert shapes curve, it kind of create all those curved surfaces, but you know, sometimes it's hard to tell how it, did, how it will look like. So I will insert shapes curve tool. I will start in here and I will most likely at one point here because when you have a very long line, then all those rounded parts will be long as well. And you will see what I mean. If I just if I would just select one point here and at one point here you will see there is this you know back well, circle going back, so I have to press the backspace key and make sure there are some in-between points in here, just so that those rounded parts are not that you know extreme, I would say. So I will use the same technique to simply trace the other lines as well. And again. If I want those uh, curved parts to be smaller, I need those points to be closer to each other. So I'll add a few more points around here. Again, it's not very same looking, but again, you know, it doesn't matter that much because you just need to make sure that it kind of looks similar. It has a similar shape. Okay, that's just fine. So I will trace those left uh, two left ones as well. So insert shape not this one, but the curve tool. And 
and also another thing which is not making this very helpful is when you draw this in the zoom in view like I'm doing right now you can see that the line which we are drawing is actually being a little bit blurred so that's not helping at all okay so those are the shapes and we can continue with the star so I will zoom in as, as, as much as I can over the star on the top and you will notice that there there is no star which is like not resized or not rotated so I will insert a new four point star uh, sorry five point star which is this one I will draw it in a similar size but before I copy this I will just rotate it and make sure that the shape is about right and it seems like the size and the shape is about right I will set the outline to no outline and as you can see I'll most like resize it to be a little bit bigger like, like this okay now I just need to copy this shape like I don't know 20 times or so before I do that I will actually right click and select size and position I will reset the rotation to be zero degrees and try to match the you know alignment together with the center of this image then I will insert a new helper shape which will be the oval so I'll insert shapes oval and it will be actually a circle drawn with the shift key I will set the fill to be no fill and again I will try to align it with the, with the circle with all those shapes around then I will select the oval the circle and the and the star and the group everything together so I will select group group those together okay now we need to copy this uh, group 22 times and we can do it in few different ways we can just hit ctrl c and ctrl v and it will of course be moved to the new spot you know so later on you would have to position everything properly or what we can do is we can select the group and if i can select the group and i will hit uh, ctrl d which is for duplicating it's also down here if i select duplicate i will move those shapes to the very same spot as the previous shape like this and now I, when I hit Ctrl D, it will actually get duplicated to the very same spot. You cannot see anything, but if I open the selection pane, you will notice as if, I, if I hit the Ctrl D on my keyboard, I'm creating a new duplicate. So one, two, three, four, five. Should be enough. Okay, so you can see everything is kind of uh, bold. That's just because we have a very same shapes overlaying on top of each other, but that's perfectly fine. I will open this size proper size and properties, and I will just start, you know, setting those values to maybe like I will start in one uh, minus one hundred degrees, and I will just uh, use my arrow keys to make sure that it's being aligned. And I will select the next group, set the minus one hundred, and set it to the right value. And I'm just setting to minus 100 just so I don't need to press the down arrow key like for half a minute like this. So I'm starting at like maybe one minus 90 and I'm just guessing those numbers. I'm pretty sure that I can come up with the formula in my head to make sure that the spacing is equal. But seems like that using the arrow keys is, is, is working perfectly fine in this case. So I will just continue like this. And it, you know, it's not very super exciting stuff to do but if, if you have seen one of my older drills i'm actually i've actually shown how to do this stuff inside microsoft word using the macro so i had the macro to copy the shape multiple times and rotate it at, at the same time maybe i'll i could reuse the macro this time but i don't have it right now so i will just use this manual method to just set the angle select next shape set the angle rotate it to the right space or right point and i believe that we are almost at the end so let's just quickly continue with setting the right angles for each individual arrow i'm just hoping that i have enough arrows we will see okay so i was even able to guess the value that's nice and I need two more arrows and I only have one okay so what I need to do is I need to copy paste this group one more time move it to the same spot if I can like this and increase the angle to be 116 okay that's perfectly fine so what I will do now is I will actually hide most of my shapes I will hide all those mountain shapes as well as the mountain as well as the picture so I only have those circles together with the stars. 
I will select everything. Maybe I will zoom out a little bit and select everything. Make sure that everything is already selected. Then I will ungroup everything. So select format, group, ungroup. And now I have all those uh, stars and ovals ungrouped. Now, how do I select only the stars? I can probably draw the selection rectangle like this, which will cover the stars, but not the ovals entirely, which will cause only the stars to be selected. I can select group, group those stars, hide this group with the stars, select all the ovals and just delete those. So I have the mountain, I have those lines, I have the stars. So the only missing part is the label. And the nice thing is that there is a font which kind of looks the same. It's also, of course, inspired by this logo. So I can just insert a new text box and I will type in Paramount and I will set the font to be Paramount New Script. I will put the link into the description just so you can download it. And you can see that the only difference is there is a big spacing between the first letter and the letter A. And even when we should have the kerning turned on, it's, it's probably the kerning is not uh, taking care of this. So what we need to do is to select the first letter, select the font properties and in the character spacing, I will set the spacing to be condensed maybe like by 10 points. I don't know what this, this number is hard to guess. So it's, you know, I was lucky to get the right because, you know, I've already done this logo, but usually you have to do it multiple times to get everything right. Okay, so I believe we have everything we need to, so I will select the picture, move it to the side. If I can, then I will select everything else and move it to the other side, like this. Now I will reset the colors for this picture, although I'm pretty sure that everything is just black. And I will start coloring our logo. So the text should be actually white. So I'll set the white for the text, the background, as well as all the other shapes should be solid fill. Sorry, I've already selected the text as well. So everything except for the text should have the solid fill in the black color without any transparency. And the line should be set to no line. Okay. And that's it. That's how you create the Paramount logo inside Microsoft PowerPoint in like 12 minutes or so. Thanks for watching.